Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was glad when they said unto us, let us come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just, just give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So this morning I thought I was doing uh, the prayer, but it's actually the scripture. And I just thank God, hallelujah, that he gave me a, a, a word last night. <laughs> Amen. Won't he do it? Yes, yes, he, will. yes he will. So church, I'm going to be coming to you from the book of Psalms, right. Psalms 103. Right if we can all stand for the reading of the word, just out of reverence for who God is. Yes. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, uh -huh. and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Yes. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Yes. Yes, Who yes. forgives all your iniquity, yes. iniquities. Yes. Who heals all your diseases. Yes. Just going to say that again. Oh, and Lord. forget not all his benefits, yes, who forgives all your iniquities, yes, which is your sins, who heals oh, all your diseases, yes, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. So great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, well, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his child, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Yes, Lord. For he knows our frame. Hallelujah. He knows the very hairs that we have on our head. He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field. So he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and it places, remembers it no more. Yes. But the mercy of the Lord, come on here, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. Yes. Hallelujah. We have to fear the Lord, church. Yes. We have to fear the Lord in this hour. I know it's a lot going on. But God is calling us to fear him. He's calling us to reverence him and put away our idols, put away our sin. Amen. God bless you. Oh, come on. Let us stand and let us clap our hands. Oh, you people. And let us shout out to God with the force of triumph. Hallelujah. The word clap me to hammer down and the word shout me to tear down. So come on, let us create an atmosphere for the presence of the Lord. What the devil meant for bad, God shifted for the good. Oh, come on, bless the Lord. The son of the will bless the Lord at all times. Hello, Messiah. And his praises should continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear and be glad in it. Oh, come on, new life, let create an atmosphere for God. Hallelujah. For the earth is the Lord. And the food is thereof. The world and all his people belong to him. He have founded upon the seas. He have established upon the waters. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those we clean hand in a prayer heart. Those who have not lifted up their souls for an island are sworn deceitfully. They may receive the blessings of the Lord and rest standing with their God of Israel. For we are the generation that seek him, that seek his face, O Jacob. So come on and lift up your head, O ye gates. And be lifted up your blessed doors. And the king, Shikana Messiah, and the king of glory. Shall come in his place. For who is the king of glory? My God, he is the Lord. Full of mighty. Full of glory. Hallelujah. What a privilege and what an honor. I felt your prayers. I saw the healing of God bursting from your prayers. Hallelujah. My God, let us sanctuary in on prayer. 
My God, prayer changes things. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let us clear our mind of every worry. Yes. Hallelujah, every deceit, every condemnation in the name of Jesus Christ. And let us come bold as for the throne of grace to attain mercy in our time of need. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, King David said in Psalms 92 and 10, he said, Lord, with fresh oil you have anointed me. And I declare fresh oil upon you in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, so let's clear our minds and let's turn in on the throne room of God. Father, what a privilege. Father, what an honor. Truly you are the King of Kings. Truly you are the Lord of Lords. Who is, who was, who is still yet to come. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are God of peace in the midst of confusion. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God that has healed me and have healed us in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are the great physician, Lord God. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are Jehovah Roha. You are the presence. But it's your intimacy that we're seeking, God. You told us to go into our own room and close our doors and pray to you in secret. You may reward us openly, Lord God. You are Jehovah Kadiskanu. You are our righteous Father who have made us righteous, God. And we walk in this righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are with victor, God. You are our banner who have given us victory over the devil because of the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is why we give you the praise. This is why we, we give you the glory, God. There's none like you in all the earth, God. You said you'll never leave us and you will never forsake us. And we see that, God, in your hand. You told us to come up here in Revelation chapter 4 that you may show some things that is soon to come huh? in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ huh? and we thank you Lord God huh? we are your sons and daughters huh? you told us to come out from amongst them huh? and be ye separated huh? touch not the unclean things huh? that you may receive us huh? we will be your sons and daughters huh? and by God you say you would be our father huh? you said in your word God huh? we are a chosen generation huh? a royal priesthood huh? a holy nation huh? a people that belong to you, huh? truly, Father, it is you that birthed us from the kingdom of darkness, huh? and you birthed us into the kingdom of light, huh? and you made us ambassadors for Christ. Huh? For Jesus Christ Himself huh? made us kings, and He made us priests, oh God. Huh? And from our true identity in you, huh? it's you that gave us this authority. Huh? You say you gave us the authority to trade upon serpent sculpture and all of the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means should hurt us. And Father, we pray through our true identity with the authority you have given us to activate the power that is in us in the person of the Holy Ghost in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ that we can call those things that be not as though they were with the same spirit of faith. We believe in our sons and daughters. We can speak regardless of what we feel, regardless of what we see in the five sense realm because it's already established in the heavenlies, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. And because of the authority that you have given us to ignite the power in the person of the Holy Ghost, that we can speak unto the mountain and tell the mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea. Do not doubt in our hearts, but believe what we just said and it shall happen. You're not a man that you should lie, or the son of man that you should repent. Had you said you said you would make it good. Yeah. Your word do not lie, God. Your word is alive and powerful and sharper. The any two-edged sword. Yeah. The prison even between the vine and stern of our soul and spirit. And join in the marrow. Your word is the zone of our thoughts and the tents of our heart, oh God. And with the authority you have given us to activate the power. We know we rest in that against flesh and blood, yeah. but against principalities and power, against rulers of darkness, spirit weakness in heavenly realms, and though we walk in the flesh, God, we do not war after the flesh in the name of Jesus Christ, for the weapon of warfare is not carnal, but it's mighty through God, 
pulling down every demonic stronghold that's in our mind and cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And Father, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, we pray over us as your people, O oh God, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, holding the horns of the altar, O oh God, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. I speak over your people in prayer, God, that no weapon form against us shall prosper. My God, it may form, but it cannot penetrate in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Every satanic assignment, with every demonic assignment in the name of Jesus Christ, we break every satanic assignment that causes sickness and disease. You spirit of infirmity, we command you to loose your hope off our families in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. The spirit of infirmity that causes sickness and disease, your time is up, and we command you to loose your hope in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Loose the bodies in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. You foul tormenting demon, you are trespassing on Jesus, blood brought property, and we know who we are in Christ and the authority He has given us. So the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence in this season is taken by force. So we command you to loose your hope off the minds in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. We come against the Lord spirit of heaviness that trying to cause depression and suicidal thoughts. Oh my God, you deaf and dumb spirit that causing suicide upon the people of God. You deaf and dumb spirit, loose your help. In the name Jesus. and in the blood of Jesus Christ, you spirit of depression huh, with yeah. your silent whispers. Huh, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, huh, we command you spirit of heaviness huh, and your fruits of depression, loose your hope. Yeah. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Huh, Father, we welcome your presence in the atmosphere, oh God. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, we give you first place, oh God, with your presence to create an atmosphere, God. Everything that's in the atmosphere that's not of you, God. Everything that's in the atmosphere that's nasty, we command it to go. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, Father, we give you a climate to move. We give you a climate to heal. We give you a climate for miracles. Science and oneness, because you said science and oneness. So follow us, because we believe yes. in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God, in the name and in the blood of Jesus, as we leave this place, when it's all said and done, after the preach word, after the creating the atmosphere of the praise and the worship, God, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, when we open the doors of our homes, God, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, I decree, and you said whatsoever decree, it shall be established. So, Father, I declare and I decree, and I prophesy in the atmosphere of our homes, as we open the doors and go back into our homes. I command the atmosphere huh, to be a breeding ground for miracles. Huh. I command the atmosphere huh, to be a breeding ground for the habitation huh, of the presence of God huh, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Huh. And I come against every deaf word huh, that been spoken of our mouth in ignorance huh, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Huh. We come against that old spirit of fear huh, that the coronavirus have left in the atmosphere of this nation. Huh. You spirit of Feel loose your help off the minds and the bodies of God's people. Now, God, that we position ourselves to create this atmosphere and your word, God. Let the word penetrate. Huh? Let the anointing yeah. penetrate. Huh? Let the anointing rest heavy huh? upon Pastor Miller, God. Huh? Let the kingly anointing huh? rest upon him, God. Huh? That he may speak the oracles of God huh? as if you were standing here yourself huh? in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Huh? Father, we sanctify this assembly now huh? in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Huh? We cast down every carnal mindset huh? in the name and in the blood of Jesus. Huh? Father, forgive us huh, for not coming in huh, as a sanctified vessel. Huh. Forgive us, oh God, huh, for not putting you first place, oh God. Huh. But God, teach us huh, by your spirit, oh God, huh, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Huh. And most importantly, God, huh, I thank you, God, huh, for your milk upon my life. Huh. I thank you, God, huh, for your healing hand huh, upon my life, oh God. Huh. God, I thank you, huh, as I saw you, God. Huh. I thank you for your whispers, 
God, that you have excluded me from everything that's external, that you may show me everything in me that's internally in you, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, I declare and I decree every financial blessings that have been held up for New Life Church of Faith, I command the spirit of delay to move back in the name of Jesus. And we command portals of heaven to rain down financial blessings in this house, in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Every person by the spirit, we command you to lose your hold of the financial blessings in this house, in the name and in the blood of Jesus. And Father, I'm just reminding you of your word. You told us to give. It will be given back to us, good measure, press down, shake together, and run over when you allow men to get back into this house. Well, Father, we've been givers from the establishment of New Life Church of Faith. And Father, we're looking for we expectation of giving back in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. We command the North to give it up. We command the South to hold it back. We command the East to release in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Every financial gain, every financial seed, we command you to bless them in this house in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Every dead thing, I command you to be buried and every live thing coming to fruition in the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, we give you the praise. And Father, we give you the glory. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. For in this season, oh God, that you set us on fire. That you baptize us with the fire. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. We command the spirit of sovereignty to get back out for our lives. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, don't let us be blinded by the material things in this world. Because it's only temporary. Don't let us be blinded by the blessings of the homes. Don't let us be blinded by the blessings of the cars. Don't let us be blinded of material things. Because you say that our life is like a vapor. We're here today and we're gone tomorrow, oh God. Help us to center in on our life in you like never before in this season, oh God. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, come on and clap your hand, all you people. And let us shout into God with the voice of triumph. Let us create an atmosphere for God. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's exercise the blessing. Let's hammer down the blessing. Oh, come on, all ye people. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Come on, let's exercise the praises of God. In the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ. For the Bible said that you're the King Uzziah died. I also saw the Lord high and lifted up. And the train of his robe began to fill the temple. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We give you the praise. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. You've been a good God. We was not good to you. You show yourself faithful, Lord Jesus. You showed yourself faithful, Lord Jesus. You are mighty good God, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus. You said you'll never leave us, Lord Jesus. Nor will you ever forsake us, God. And we thank you, Lord God. And we give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise, Lord Jesus. We give you the highest praise, God. We give you the highest praise, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise. Shake us once again, Lord Jesus. Shake us all again, Lord Jesus. Shake us again, Lord Jesus. Shake us again, Lord Jesus. And watch us burn with the fire, Lord Jesus. Watch us burn with the fire of the Holy Ghost, Jesus. We want to burn for you, Lord Jesus. We want to burn for you, Lord Jesus. Set us on fire. Set us on fire. Set us on fire. Set us on fire. Set us on fire, Jesus. Set us on fire, Jesus. Set us on fire, Jesus. Burn everything in us that's not of you, God. Burn everything in us that's not of you, God. Set us on fire for your glory, God. Set us on fire for the glory, God. Set us on fire. God and watch us burn for you. Watch us burn for you. Watch us burn for you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord, 
I'm calling you my sons. I'm calling you my daughters. I'm calling you to a higher place. I'm calling you to a higher place. You gotta let go of the children in this season. You gotta let go of the husband in this season. You gotta let go of the wife in this season. You gotta let everything go that is temporary. I'm calling you higher. I'm calling you higher. I'm calling you higher. For the eyes of your understanding. I'm calling you higher in this season. Come higher, my son. Come higher, my daughter. Make time for me. Make time for me. They run in two and four. But I want you to make time for me. The world is running to and fro, but you gotta make time for me. What about see? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. God promised me a miracle, and you're looking at a miracle. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I remember when we were, this accident first happened. Come on, sis. And I had gotten weary, but I couldn't let Danny see me get weary. That's so right. I went to my bedroom. And I had on my nightgown. And there was a little hole in the pocket of my nightgown. And I began to fill the pocket. Mm. And I pulled it out and there was a rock in my pocket. Come on now. Mm. And the Lord began to minister to me and he said, I am your rock. I don't know how the rock got in my pocket, but I know God knew what we needed at that time that we needed. And I want to encourage you, there is a miracle in your pocket this morning. Whatever you need from God, there is a miracle in your pocket this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for the miracles, the signs, and the wonders that follow us because we believe. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, you're looking at a man who could not even walk. He could not even walk, but God promised that he would raise him up. Well. And I said, Danny, Mother Jimson been asking about you every Sunday. And he said, babe, I'm coming. But when, I'm, when I come in, I'm coming in walking. He said, I won't give the devil the satisfaction oh of me limping in. So I thank God that he could walk in this morning for the many days going to the doctor and pushing him in the wheelchair and crutches. Hallelujah. But God stood him up today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's run that track real quick. Hallelujah. Can we get the words up on the screen, Minister Carter? Hallelujah. Can we bring that up, please? Thank you, Jesus. They say this mountain can't be moved. Come on now. They say these chains will never break. But you don't know him like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We heard the tide will never change. Yes, Lord. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. 
Clap your hands for Jesus. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, shout yeah. glory. Come on. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout thank what you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, be hallelujah. seated for just a few moments. Hallelujah. Wow. Come on, let's thank God for Elder Danny Odoms. Shout glory. Like you, the one that was attacked and got free. Now shout glory. You shout like you were the one that couldn't come and worship for weeks. And now you get an opportunity. Shout glory. glory. <sighs> what a blessing for him to be back in service on today. Somebody said it don't have to be this way. We, we, we have a tendency to make big things little. And little things big. This is something big for Danny Odoms to be here instead of Spring Hill Cemetery. Come on! Shout glory! If, if, if that was you, 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 you would have prayed like that too, right? You, you would have prayed just like that, right? You, you, you wouldn't have been... <laughs> You, you, you would have been snapping off too. And another thing, God, I just want to say thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anybody here first time, never been here on a Sunday morning? New Life Church of Faith? Stand. We're just going to honor you. you be, come on, stand, sweetie. It's your first time? No? Okay. That's Okay. That's okay. She's a sweetie anyway. Amen. We got somebody? Boom. Come on, let's thank God for this young lady. God bless you. I see you smiling on the other side of that mask. <laughs> Come on, be seated. We ain't going to sweat you no more. Come on up, uh, Minister Greg Philpot. Come on up, Deacon. Uh, praise the Lord. Win, God bless you today. Brother, brother Win, not brother Win. I'm messing up today. I done got drunk up here already. Brother Wilbur Carr, come on up here. Hallelujah. Thank God for these two men. Come on, just, yeah, come on. Stand up here with me. And I want to say, uh, some of you know Minister Greg over the years, but he's, he's making it official now. He went through some classes here at New Life, and he's going to be acting uh, as one of our ministers, one of our associate ministers. Amen. So get ready for some words of God for Minister Greg in the near future. Amen. Then we got a new deacon here. Come on. Let's thank God for Brother Wilbur Carr. Amen. We got another deacon. Went through some classes and he's ready. Amen. To get up here and, and to help wherever he can help in the ministry and opening and closing our services. Whatever else the Lord might have for him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, I'm going to give uh, Brother uh, Wilbur, uh, Deacon Wilbur Carr. Amen. Um, uh, opportunity for a few words. First of all, I want to say thank you for giving unto God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pastor Miller, I want to just thank you for all your prayers and New Life family, for your prayers throughout my time with my family. But I just want to say Pastor Miller been talking about miracles, signs, and wonders. The first Sunday that I was not at church a couple weeks ago, I asked permission from my pastor if I can go to Indianapolis to pray for my brother, which is in the hospital. When I got to the hospital, I sat with him for about three, about two and a half, three hours. And I asked him, I said, when did the doctor say you can go home? He said, the doctor said I can go home Friday or the following Monday. He had no idea that I was going to pray with him. Before I left the hospital, 
I prayed with my brother. My brother is a minister, but I prayed with him and for him. And I got home that Sunday night. That Tuesday, my brother called me and told me he was at home already. Miracle signs and wonders. The following Sunday was Mother's Day. My brother called me that Wednesday. My uncle wasn't doing well in Waukegan, Illinois. He was in hospice. He passed away the Wednesday. My brother called me while I was at the hospital registering for my appointment and told me my uncle did not make it. I was going to do a prayer with him that Sunday, but I went anyway to pray with my cousins, his daughters. And yesterday was the funeral. I went to Chicago. Praying for miracle signs and wonders. I've been praying that the Lord reunite me. With my sister. I hadn't seen my sister in 10 years. But yesterday at the church in Chicago, I met her at the casket of my uncle. Miracle signs and wonders. And I just want to thank God for the prayers that went up to my family. And I want to thank him for each and every one of my new life family. Because you all have been a great inspiration to me. And Pastor Miller, I'm going to serve and do as I can in the behalf of New Life. Thank you. I also want to say one other thing. Sister Miller, thank you for your support also. And I also want to thank you for my beautiful wife. I apologize I got a little carried away because of the, what the goodness that the Lord has done for me. My cup has been running over since 2019. I'm so overwhelmed with the blessing that he's doing for me and bringing people back in my life that has not been there. But he do take people out of your life for a reason. And he also add new people to your life. So I want to thank him for adding me to new life and add new life to my life. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Mary. Great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, I'm just so grateful uh, to be here with my family. Um, through the years, y'all have prayed for me, stood by my side, me and my mother. Um, you know, like I, I always say, it was a Holy Ghost set up um, that caused me to receive the Holy Spirit in, in Pastor Miller, Sister Miller's um, living room back when I was 18 years old. And it made me, I, I ran from God. And I had been running. I said, you know, but God just kept, you know how the Holy Ghost, he just keep on snatching you back, correcting you, straightening you up. And preparing you for such a time as this. Because this is the season of miracles, signs, and wonders. If you don't believe it, look to your left. Look to your right. If you don't ask them, to ask that person next to you their testimony. Ask them that person on the other side their testimony. They will let you know right now that God has done a miracle or has shown them a sign or has done a wonder in their life. Don't get me started now. I, I, I've been holding this back for now, for some time. <laughs> but but just just trust and believe. If you if you don't believe it now, you will believe it soon. God is going to show you something. And and when He does show you something, just say thank you, Jesus. Just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because that one thing is going to lead to another thing, to another thing, to another thing. Because He does greater and greater and greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Yes, yes. Look at Brother uh, Danny right now. Look at Brother Danny. I mean, if you don't believe it, look at that man right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. 
And uh, I mean, he just keep on doing it. This is the place. Yeah. Woo! I mean, he has assigned this church as a beacon of light in the city of Danville. Yeah. And, and, and each and every one of us is going to walk around just shining. Mm. And, and people are going to see us and be like, oh, my God, what is that thing on you? And you're going to be like, oh, it ain't nothing but Jesus. Yeah. It ain't nothing but Jesus. You want some of this Jesus? Here, let me, let me pray for you. And that's what it's all about, leading people to the Lord in Jesus' name. I love y'all. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for Minister Gray and for Deacon Carr. Come on. Come on. God's adding men to the church. Y'all better shout in this place. We've been praying for men. Come on. There's some more men in here. God got a hook in you, and you are not going to get loose. Because we're not going to stop praying. Come on, let's thank God for Sister Dora uh, today in the service. Hallelujah. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Sister Dora said, I got something to say. Stay right there, Sister Dora. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to come to you. How many know we don't have regular church around here? We have Holy Ghost Church. Regular church just won't do. We've got to talk about these miracle signs and wonders. Can't sit down on God because he's been so good to me. You know, I thought we were coming back a Sunday ago and no devil tapped my bar. I was in my bed sleeping. I had to sleep and hit my head on the floor. Moses was trying to get me up, but he couldn't get me up. I said, Moses, you can't get me up. Just call down my neck. And the dude came and got me up and I went over the car. And you know, I was thanking God. God just let me see another. Woo, Lord Jesus. I can't even tell it all. Yes. But God been good to me. Yes. Yeah, he so sure has. Yes. And, and uh, Moses come, came in there with the wheelchair, and I took my cane and hit the wheelchair. I said, I ain't going to be in no wheelchair. I'm going to walk. Yes. I told God, I'm going to walk. Yes. My mama said, girl, get up and walk. God can't you just sit down. You got to get up and move. Yes. And I thank God for a praying mama. Yes. When I had my stroke in the uh, in uh, in uh, I had went to visit my daughter, my Shirley, in Georgia. Yes. And, and I had my son, and my, my mama called me. She said, girl, God said, so you're going to be all right. And I've been all right ever since. Yes. I said, thank God for a praying mother. Yes. Because she prayed for me, and God is still, still standing. Yes. When I was in rehab, I had, God had put me in a, a deep dream. Yes. And I thought I was going out. And I said, Lord, please don't take me. I want to see my grandbabies grow up. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, Mother Day, that was a blessing. Yeah. They were all at my house running around. Yeah. I told Sister Miller, it was just a blessing to live see my great grandbabies. Yeah. All of them, all of them was yeah. there. And I said, I ain't going to worry about them tearing up the house. I clean it up when they leave. <laughs> there ain't too many the people here to see their great grandbabies, but I seen all of them at my house for yeah. Mother Day. Yeah. And all my children was there. I told Mojo, I just want all my children to come home. Yeah. My baby from Las Vegas, she surprised me. I was sitting up there talking to somebody on the phone, and she walked in the door. I said, I called to your lady, my baby's here. Yes. She said, Mama, you told me that you want all your kids home. So I guess why I came. It was a blessing. My That's son was there, yeah. and all my baby, my Shirley was, my oldest baby was here. And though she did not leave away from him. She said, Mama, I got a doctor for you to see. I'm not going to leave here until you go see this stroke doc. <laughs> and she sat there with me. The man was taking so long to come in, but she said, Moses went out there, stood out there in the hallway. She said, I'm going to show my face. The doctor finally came in, and he was telling us, so she said, Mama, it took me a whole year to get you this appointment. I'm not going to leave here until he see you. Mm -hmm. But he seen me, and he explained things. But I told God, I'm going to get healed for my head. What's going on with my head, God? I'm, I'm believing in you for my healing, God. Yes. Ever since I've been in this spot, I've been believing that faith. I say, I'm walking by faith and not by sight. Right. And I'm believing that faith that God's going to bring me through. Yes. And I told Sister Miller, honey, I'm going to be 100%. Yes. I'm believing in God for 100%. Yes. I'm going to walk and yes. my hands going to come back. Yes. And while I was in the bed last night, my hand was open up. 
Yes. So I believe in God's work. I said, God, I thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord, because he has been good to me. Yes. And I never forget what God been for to me. Yes. And y'all just keep on praying. I've been praying for you. Y'all have to do, Sister Lucas. Mm -hmm. And I know he's going to be good, too. Yes. God's going to bring him out. Y'all yes. keep on praying. Yes. Okay, okay baby. He's going to bring him out. Yes. Come on, somebody. Shout glory. Sister Doris, I got to tell it why I can. Come on, shout glory. Shout hallelujah. Shout thank you, Jesus. Somebody say miracles, signs, and wonders. And they're happening now. Come on, just receive it. Lift your hands. Come on, receive it. Don't be too proud. Hallelujah. Lord, today, have your way. Bless everybody in this place. Lord, speak to me, speak through me. I'm your servant, and I want to serve you. I'm serving your people for your glory. Jesus' name, amen. All right, come on again. Thank God. Put your hands together again. Come on, thank God for our first lady on today. Amen. Show sure enough, my ride and live chick. Amen. Thanking God for her today. Thank God for you on today and everybody here today, our visitor, everyone that's here to our new deacons and to our new minister and to other people that are coming up. Amen. We thank God. We thank God and we thank God. So let's go quickly. We got a little time and uh, there's a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Who can read? Read. Hello? Do not answer the devil when he knocks. He's knocking. But when he knocks, don't let him in. Saints, I'm telling y'all the truth. Satan is out to get each and every one of us. There's nobody in this room that he's not knocking at your door. You just got to realize it's not God who's knocking, but it's the devil. Whenever you want to do wrong, that's Satan knocking. Come on here. Whenever you want to go back to the cray-cray, that's Satan knocking. Whenever you just say, well, you know, it ain't going to hurt this one time. That's Satan knocking. So what's happening in our world today, it's tragic. It's tragic what happened in Buffalo, New York on yesterday for the devil knocked at that young man's heart and he went into that grocery store and he killed all those innocent people. Somebody say, that's the enemy that knocked at that young man and motivated him to go and drive for hours to go to kill specifically African Americans. The enemy wants to cause a race riot in this country. Come on, somebody. He wants us to be divided based on our skin, and we have to not answer the knock. We have to make it up in my mind, I'm going to love everybody. I said we got to make it up in our minds, we're going to love everybody. We're not going to figure out a way to justify being disobedient and to hurt or harm or to put up, I mean, put down, criticize or condemn anybody because that is the enemy's knock. He knocks how many know he knocking when you wake up in the morning. He already trying to start some trouble. Come on, married people. He's knocking to try to destroy your marriage. Anytime there's odd, uh, uh, you know, misunderstandings and disagreements, that's the enemy trying to cause divorce. 
He's knocking. Anytime our young people find themselves, you know, rebelling against their parents, that's the enemy knocking. We have to answer the knock of God and not answer the knock of the enemy. Because Satan's job is, this is his number one assignment. I got a little time, I'm going to show it to you in the scripture. His number one assignment is to get you to open the door for him and shut the door on Jesus. That's his number one assignment, to get you to believe in him and not believe in God. So he's coming to you and he is coming to you for no other reason but to turn you, turn me, turn us against God. And the signs are all around us. Come on, y'all. We see it. We've seen the terrible, terrible tragedy in Buffalo, New York on yesterday. We, we hear about this not just one time, but these things have been happening, and they're happening more frequently where people are just coming unglued, and they're being convinced and demonized to go out and to murder innocent people. So we've got to pray. We've got to pray. We've got to fast in this hour. Do you hear me? Because you will not be able to resist that knock if you're not prayed up. If you haven't been in fasting. Listen, saints, this ain't nothing new. It's just the fact that we are seeing it more and more and more happen in our country. And the enemy is not going to ever cease because the Bible says he's walking to and fro. And he's looking for somebody that he can enter in that will answer that knock. Somebody say, return to cinder. Would somebody say, address unknown. Uh-uh, wrong name, wrong address, wrong person. Tell him to take it back. Because he's knocking to try to get in. And he wants in so he can destroy you. Can I get a witness? We'll have a lot of time, so let's go to Genesis. Let's just look at real quick John 12 and 32. And, uh, you know, that's our foundation scripture this year. He says, if I and I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. How many of you know the Lord is the one knocking at our hearts right now? It's the Lord that's saying, if you just come to me, I'll save you from the devil's knock. Come on now. I'll save you from the enemy's ways. I'll save you from those very things that are tempting you. Amen? Amen. So let's go to Genesis 3 and 1. Amen. Let's just go here and let's just dissect this uh, today. And again, we just thank God for everybody here today. He says, now the serpent was more subtle, huh, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Somebody said he was smooth with it. Somebody said when he's knocking, you don't even know it's him. Because he's smooth with it. Why? No, he don't have a red suit and a pitchfork, but he's coming to you in disguise. Uh, he's coming to you with enticing words. Come on, you. He's coming, bringing you something that he knows that you like. Somebody say, don't answer the knock. Now, y'all are sitting here right now, and this is a good message, and so you need to apply it to the day and tomorrow and the rest of the week because he's coming every day. Come on here. You, you're not getting out of the day that he hasn't made some suggestions to you. Come on. you sitting right in church, and he's knocking. Oh, it was him that told you not to speak today. Uh-oh. That was his knock that told you not to be happy about your sister new dress. Uh-huh, it was him knocking that told you not to be happy about your brother's new suit. Uh-huh, I don't know who wasn't happy about the new minister and the new deacon. I don't know who he knocked to try to convince you, well, so what? Amen. Uh-huh, he is the one. Now, see, this is the truth, saints. Jealousy is part of Satan's knock. If you would ever discover you, you would never be jealous of me. 
if you would ever discover you, you would not be jealous of nobody in this room. But the enemy's assignment is to knock at your heart to try to make you think somebody's better than you. And when you take that mindset, that's not from God, that's the enemy's knock. For the Bible said jealousy is crueler than the grave. And so when you uh, respond to jealousy, just so you can understand, you just open the door. No, he didn't just knock, you open the door. You won't allow yourself to enjoy somebody else's life because the enemy has made you think your life is less. Why do you think we have racial divide in this country? Because he has convinced people that one group is better than the other. That's the knock of the enemy. He's talked to people and made people feel that it won't be enough for them if you get some. And I got the Bible, and the Bible says God supply all that we need. Oh, yeah, there's not a lack of God providing, but there is a lack of distribution. Can I get a witness? Oh, there's an abundance, but uh, the enemy has convinced some people that they should not share the wealth. That's a knock of the enemy. Come on here. God is the supplier. Am I right? That's not one man in this room ever made dirt. So how can you claim anything that the, the fruit that came out of the ground, somehow you're responsible because you tilled it or you put the seed that God created in the ground and then you were standing back while God watered it and let the sun come on it and now somehow it's yours? Hmm. Uh-huh. You, you would never got out of your mama's womb if God wasn't the one that told you that now it's time for you to push. The knock of the enemy is to somehow make ourselves think that we are great. And we are great, but we're not greater than God, nor are we greater than anybody else in this room. The enemy's assignment is to make you believe in him and not believe in God. I got Bible. And the Bible says this, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Somebody said he already knew the answer. Watch people when they ask you questions because a lot of times they ain't asking because they don't know. They're questioning you about what you know. And he knew that the woman knew because write this next verse. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, give me three and two. Come on, we're moving. Come on. And it says what? And the woman did what? The woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. What's she say? But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Is there anybody in this room that ever heard uh, a mother or father or somebody else in your life tell you, You know better. Have you ever heard somebody say, You know better. Sister Eve knew better. Because she just spoke exactly what the father had said. We got to quit opening the door like we don't know that that wasn't the knock of God. But that was the knock of the enemy. And he always wants us to go ahead and violate what the father said. How many parents in this room have said, you know better. And you tell them that because you know you already told them better. You ought to taught them right. You have already taught them right from wrong. Come on here. You've already made sure that they know how to go in and how to go out. Come on. And the enemy's assignment is to always make you act like you don't know what's up. Oh, you already know when you got in that car, you weren't supposed to get in it. You already know that you weren't supposed to go with that boy or that girl. You already know you weren't supposed to skip school. You already know you were not supposed to do this, that, and the other. And that's why the Holy Ghost is saying clearly to the day, to this day, don't answer the knock. 
Don't sit here and act like he's not knocking. You, you know he's knocking. You know he's walking to and fro. We know that in the message today is God want to save somebody in this room from opening the door. Elder Odom's been teaching and he's telling us quit receiving demonic counsel. Demonic counsel is when the devil come after God speaks and try to convince you that what God said wasn't true. He wants you and I to believe God's a liar. Don't answer the knock. Somebody say, you know the truth? Walk in it. Obey it. Submit to it. Y'all didn't got quiet on me now. People don't leave new life because of God. They leave a new life because of Pastor Miller. That's the excuse they use. Pastor Miller want me to do this, and Pastor Miller want me to do that. No, go on and say it. God, you want me to do this, and you want me to act a certain way, and I don't want to do it, so I'll use Pastor Miller. Is there any parents in this room that would say children are disobeying not because they don't know right from wrong, but they want to say, that's what my mama told me. That's what my dad. No, God told you to keep your little drawers up. God didn't let you know you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't lie. Come on here. But we like to use humans so we don't have to accept the fact that we the one opening them doors. We're answering the knock. As long as we answer the knock, we are going to be in trouble, new life. We're going to find ourselves in trouble. After that tragedy on yesterday, I'm telling y'all that we better pay attention to the little things. Quit making God's word little and making the devil words big. You better understand when God is speaking, that's when you better listen. That's when you better pay attention because the enemy is coming right behind this message today to talk you out of this word. When it's not good ground and it's just shallow ground, he's going to come and snatch this word away from you. He's going to make you believe like little Eve. He's going to make you believe that he is more trustworthy than God. Be careful, y'all, who talks to you. I keep saying this to y'all. Quit letting other folks talk to you and make them more important than what God has said. Come on, what your mama and daddy didn't say. Come on, young people. What, what the teacher is saying in the classroom is more important than what's on social media. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. You, you you too busy worrying about what's going on with your little friends when you in algebra class. It's all about algebra. You in the, uh, social studies, all about social study. Can I get witness? Don't answer the knock of distractions. There may be some people in your life who don't want to go to heaven. I don't know about y'all. I want to go to heaven. Is there anybody in here like Pastor Miller want to go to heaven? Well, come on and shout glory. It's been helping me so much, Elder Oldham has been helping me. He said what we're going through is a moment. You know, when I think about the pain or the, the, the distress or the issue on a moment level, I can go through it a whole lot better. See, because we're in a moment, but we're going to for what we're going to forever. We got to get through the moment because we're going to forever. But if you make this moment like it's forever, you will find yourself in forever. This life is but a moment. It appears like a vapor and then it vanishes away. So just for a moment, somebody say, shut your mouth. For a moment, don't retaliate. Come on, somebody. Just for a moment, hold your peace. And he'll fight your battle. Hallelujah. 
You work in the job just for a moment. Let the supervisor be the supervisor so you can keep eating. But no, the devil knock at your heart and tell you, tell him how you really feel. Tell her how you really feel. And when you answer that door, you now don't have a job. Just for a moment, husbands, wives, shut your mouth and quit having all these moments turning into eternity. You done lost your family because you could not hold your peace, but you had to open the door. I never liked your mama anyway. Woo! Somebody said, you never should have opened that door. That one gonna come up till you get 97. You didn't forgot everything, but they won't forget that. Just a minute. Didn't you say you didn't like my mom? <laughs> Somebody said, don't open that door. Because he wants to destroy your life. And he will destroy your life if we open the door. You know what they say, you cannot get back spilled milk. Can't get it back. How many words can we not get back? That we open the door, oh, come on here, and said something to a woman or a man that you never should have said, and now you didn't jacked up your marriage. Uh-oh. You didn't mess up your whole life because you could not keep moving. Opening that door that you now live with regrets for the rest of your life. That young man who let the enemy use him for the rest of his life. Life without parole. Mass murder over his name. Murderer. Because he opened that door. 18 years old. Y'all listen, we better pray in this room for the enemy has opened the internet up. The report I got already today that the other young man that killed all those black people over in South Carolina or North Carolina in that church, they still run it on the internet. So they can keep feeding the demon of murder. Somebody said you better be careful when you click on your computer. Cause what door are you getting ready to open? Y'all ain't saying nothing now. When you get your little smartphone, how smart are you that you clicked on the wrong app? And you view the wrong things that have now turned you against God. Turn you against your mother, your father. Turn you against your fellow man. Somebody said, don't answer the knock. I'm telling you, my time is spent already. And I'm telling you, I'm going to at least try my best to get through this Genesis scriptures today. Come on, come on, come on. Where are we at? The fourth verse. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall what? Now did the lady Eve, did she or did she not already say what God told her not to do? And so what happens when you listen to other folks, they will come behind what God said and convince you that what God said was not true. That's his assignment. If he can get anybody in this room to discredit this message today and discredit God's word and the truth of God's word, that means you did not return to sender, but you took a package that you never should have took. And God told Eve, and Eve already spoke it, don't mess with the tree. And Satan come right behind her and say, you won't die. Which says, now what? God's a liar. He knocked to, he convinced her that God is not telling you the truth. Come on, give me five, three and five. What does it say? For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Somebody said he will always sweeten the pot. 
He will always entice you to tell you that you missing out. Come on, young people. Right now, when you're a teenager, they'll tell you you're missing out. Your mom and daddy just keeping you from fun. No, they're keeping you from the AIDS virus. They're keeping you from a, a child that you're not ready to raise. Come on, somebody. They, 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 they're keeping you from possibly getting in the wrong crowd and coming up missing because now they're trafficking you all over the world. Uh, they're keeping you from smoking a blunt that is laced with fentanyl and you dead. Ain't nothing wrong with you, marijuana. Uh, God is the one that grew it, didn't he? Can y'all hear him? Can you hear him? Yeah, he gonna tell you, yeah, God grew it, but they ain't gonna tell you man tampered with it. So just last week, two college girls, one of the college campuses died because they were taking some pills that they thought would just help them stay awake so they could get all these uh, assignments done. But they didn't tell them that they had laced the pills with fentanyl and here they are in college dead. Somebody said he going to tell you something, but it ain't going to be the whole truth. God told Adam and Eve the whole truth. And they decided, and even Adam decided to go with the devil. I don't know who God talking to in this room, but you better not open that door. You better hold your peace. Don't answer the knock. Especially when you know what God said. Is there any excuse? Somebody say, you know better. What's your excuse when you know better? You already know what God said, Eve. You already know, Adam, what God said. Tommy Miller, everybody in here, we've all seen it come short of the glory, and it's not all ignorance. It's a lot of we wanted to do it anyway. Can I get a witness in this place? Come on, give me these other verses. Come on, come on, we got to go. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And when the woman saw that the tree was for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree uh, uh, to be desired to make one wise, she took of the, of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. <laughs> Can I help somebody? People get in trouble. They want you in trouble with them. Uh-oh. Did y'all hear what I just said? When somebody don't do what God said, they want you also to not do what God said. I ain't making no excuses for Adam. Because when we finish reading through here, you're going to see Adam knew just as much as Eve knew. And that's what's so sad when you know just as much as the person that's trying to entice you. Quit trying to blame the person after you go ahead and do what you wanted to do anyway. Eve knew and Adam knew. And so they did just what they wanted to do. Somebody said, don't answer the knock. If you know right from wrong, the Bible said he didn't know to do it good and do it not is sin. And the wages of sin is death. I know some of y'all, please come back while I'm preaching. I don't know where y'all at. Please come back. One of the perfect things that Satan do when preachers are preaching is to take your mind off the message. Somebody said that's a knock right there. When he got you all looking at that sunshine and telling you, come out here. You can't wait to get out here. You can't wait for the chicken. You can't wait to get out of them clothes and them shoes that hurt you. You, you, and, and, and then when the service is over, you say, what did Pastor Miller say? I don't even remember what he was talking about. I hear him so much, you know, I already know most of what he was going to say. But the very thing you needed to hear, the enemy made his attempt to pull you out of the message so you wouldn't hear the truth. More than sunshine and more than chicken, more than tight shoes, you need to hear the Lord is saying, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. 
There is a knock that you and I need to open up and let God come in. Quit being in a hurry to get away from the word of God. You know you can watch TV for six and seven hours. You can watch every playoff game. You can look at HD and all that other stuff. On what is it, H when they're selling stuff? Yeah, at that one. You can watch that, and, and you ain't going to buy nothing, but you just sitting there just having a dream fest. Ooh. That night, that night. And they're going to always have something that entice you. Come on, somebody. The Bible said the eye is never tired of seeing and the ear is never tired of hearing. But what we need to hear today is that the enemy wants you to be distracted and not to pay attention to what the Father has said. He don't want you to get this today. He wants you to minimize this message. Okay, yeah, 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 that's okay. And then go right out there and answer the knock. Hello, come on in. Come right on in. He's Jack the Ripper. He's a dirty dog. He's a criminal. He's merciless. Did you see how he killed those people yesterday going to get some bread and some milk just on a regular Saturday afternoon, not thinking that they're getting ready to die? Somebody say in this room, you better pay attention to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. This church ain't safe. Your job ain't safe. Your home ain't safe. Ain't no place safe but to be where God tell you to be. You can play around and not pray and fast if you don't want to. Just keep on saying, ah, yeah, I hear y'all talking about praying and fasting. And that's the enemy who's telling you, oh, you surely don't need to fast. Oh, you surely don't need to stay uh, familiar with the scripture. You don't really need to pray that much. That's him. Whenever you get those indications, he is trying to keep you from some truth. He's trying to give you something more than a mc. You need God's word more than you need another McDonald's. Look how quiet it's getting. This ain't going to, no, don't have nothing new for you. If you don't pray and fast, you're going to answer the knock. I'm telling you right now, you won't be strong enough to say no when the devil comes. Jesus turned him around because he had prayed and fast 40 days. And then he told his disciple, now I'm going to go away, but while I'm going away, y'all better pray it fast. I want a miracle. You ain't going to get a miracle unless you pray and fast. I want Junebug to get saved. He ain't going to get saved unless you pray and fast that demon off of him. Yep. I do love my kids. You can't tell me I don't love my kids. Do you love them enough to turn down McDonald's? Coca-Cola? Frit fries, biggie size. Oh, you a great cook. Everybody can see that when you walked in. Look at you, look at you now. Oh, he's offensive. No, because you mad because you don't want to give up them beans and greens. All that cornbread. Can I have your cornbread? <laughs> Truth. Saints, in this hour, would y'all at least say amen that we need to watch and pray? Amen. That we enter not into temptation? For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak? You want Pastor Miller to fix it. You want God to fix it. But you're the only one that can fix it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, you're the only one that can save your own life. I read it in the Bible. He said, let every man, woman, work out their own soul salvation. Let You, you got to work it out. Quit blaming God and everybody else for the mess you in. This ain't to you, this ain't to you. Then you don't have to get all tight-faced and look back at me with those daggers.
y'all go to a church where they got plenty of sugar. The Bible said they seek in the last days those preachers that will tickle their ears. They give them all that sugar to tell them everything is all right. No, it ain't. It's trouble like crazy. Didn't you just hear that there was a massacre at a grocery store? And we talking about opening up our own grocery store? We better be prayed up around here. Come on. If it happened in Buffalo, why not Danville? If they went someplace else and, and killed a bunch of innocent people, why not America? They killing all them innocent people in Ukraine. If the dog bit Elder Odom, why not you or me? You think that just was a sign to him? You think the enemy just going to pick on him? You listening to all that demonology teaching too. Y'all ain't saying nothing now. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. I did say amen a few times. Well, that amen meant you agreed. And the enemy said, you agreed with shutting me out? I'm coming for you. Be naive if you want to. Play like you ain't heard this word today. The enemy's assignment is to steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Okay, I got to finish. Is 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 listen, listen. It, it, it's one twenty nine. Just give me give me a few more minutes, please. I know y'all ready, but hold on. Give me Genesis wherever we at, and I'm gonna try to stop talking. We just gonna read these rest of these verses out. Well, I'm gonna say a few things, but not as much as I was saying. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and that they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Come on. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Somebody say, when you get in trouble, you hide. Uh-oh. When you violate God's word, you go to hiding. Some people don't come to the service uh, the week they did. They're crazy. They need a few weeks to get back together. And some don't never show back up no more. They just say, I ain't even going. I already know Pastor Miller. He's going to be trying to tell somebody what the Bible say. And I don't want to be hearing right now what the Bible say. So I'll stay away. And how many know when you're in trouble, you really don't want to go before God? You hiding from God. We hide from God. Soon as they messed up, they hid from God. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Come on. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Now you want to act bashful. You know, I wasn't properly dressed when you came by. <laughs> We make excuses on why we don't want to come before God and we'll try to say, I got to get this in order and I got to get that in order. No, God said, I already know where you are and I see your nakedness and I was seeing it when you didn't see it. So you ain't got to get dressed for God. You ain't got to get all churched up for God to come on here, somebody. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree uh, whereof I commanded that thou should have not eat? Come on, what did he say? And the man said, uh, the woman whom thou gavest to, to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Somebody said when people go to sin and they go to point their finger at somebody else. Adam did not own that he disobeyed God. He blamed Eve. He didn't own the fact that he knew right from wrong. He blamed Eve. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said unto the, uh, said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Somebody say, Eve said, I got tricked. Which says, What? Well, it ain't my fault. 
and God already showed that Eden knew to leave the tree alone. So why is you now acting like you didn't know it was wrong when he told you to eat? You knew it was wrong. But when we sin, we have a tendency to blame everybody but ourselves. Y'all ain't going to say nothing now. God trying to help somebody not to open that door. He's trying to help somebody right now. The devil is coming to knock, and excuses ain't going to do you no good. Can I get a witness? Okay, give me 15, 3 and 15. I'm going to show you. The, the, the excuses won't do you no good because he said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between the seed and her seed, and it shall what? Bruise thy head, and thy shall bruise his feet. Come on, give me 16. We got about done. Huh? Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy, com thy conceptions in sorrow and I, what? Shall bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. Ooh, the women don't like that one. Ooh, but it's a part of punishment because your girl Eve messed with the tree. Y'all don't like it. Right now, I don't know how many times I done done marriage ceremonies and they want to make sure I take out submit. <laughs> Obey, submit. Your desire to your husband is also a part of punishment because when you got your heart fixed on him, he's fixed on NBA. Oh, yeah, he's fixed on everything but you. You're a good woman. You're a great wife. You're nobody going to take care of that man like you take care of him. But a part of what happened in the garden has caused division in the marriage. Amen. Amen. Oh, I ain't done, y'all ladies. Come on, I got something for the men coming up. Come on. And unto Adam he said, Because thou have hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of the uh eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thy Eat of it all the days of thy life. Men, 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 men. Because Adam messed up, we have trouble trying to get some life out of the ground. We suffer going to these jobs where we get dogged out. We get pushed back and, and held back. And, and, and they give you not enough to take care of your family, but it's just enough to make you mad. And then if you ain't careful, you'll find yourself trying to pacify yourself with some drug or some alcohol because you're tired of tolling and it don't produce. But it's a part of our punishment for what? Obeying our wives when God told us not to obey them when he has spoken. Let me make it plain so don't nobody get it twisted. There's a place in the scripture that God required the word of God for Adam and Eve. And they both violated that word and got themselves in trouble. Is there still some people in this room? A couple of y'all. The rest of y'all, where y'all at? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. The problem is we men and women want to blame everybody but ourselves. We answer the knock and then act like we didn't open the door. You, did you open the door? Did you do what God told you not to do? Well, see, it was for my wife. Yeah. It, it, for the, the devil told me to, uh, God didn't let neither one of that get them off the hook the knock of the enemy is to get you to violate God's word are we still having good church are y'all just thinking real deep right now somebody in this room better make sure I'm going to apply it to my life that I don't want to open no doors this week can I get a witness? When I know right from wrong, I don't want to make excuse after the police lock me up. Uh-oh. I don't want to be the one to lose the job or lose my family because after I already know what God said, why did I open the door? It don't matter. That young man is going to be in prison for the rest of his life. 
18 years old, he opened that door. Somehow the demons were convincing enough that he thought it would be a very good thing to do. And so what's happening in the world right now is people are opening them doors and then they live for the rest of their lives with regret. Rest on your feet. It's 136. Somebody say, don't answer the knock. Return to sender. This week, don't answer the knock. This, this is for today. Somebody say, stay out of yesterday. Don't go into tomorrow. But today, today is the day you and I need to be careful what doors we open. Can I get any help in here that people will admit that when you cry, they don't let you out of jail because you cry? Can I get any help in this room for anybody that got pregnant and, and, and when you cried, the baby kept growing? Can, can, I, can I get any help in this room that even though you said the baby wasn't yours, Maury and everybody else say you will start paying child support now? Come on, everybody. Everybody. What door do you need to close right now? That means what? Yeah, you open it, I open it, but God say, if you come to me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You cannot, I cannot, we cannot think that God is going to say because of what we've been through that it's okay for us to disobey him. That the Lord says it's all right for us to go ahead and, you know, have some fun, what we call fun, sin. Lord, I just want a little sin because I'm so stressed out. He said, come to me and I'll take care of your stress without you living with regrets. In the name of Jesus, all over the room today, help us, Lord. Help the people of Buffalo, God. Comfort those families, Lord. Lord, we pray that that young man would repent in his heart. He has destroyed his life, but at least, Lord, you say you will still forgive him if he repents. Let him not continue to be promoting that spirit of hatred around the world. Anyone else, Lord, that has the same mindset, Father, we pray that they would repent before it's too late. All of us in the room, Lord, help us to not open no doors this week, not get into our feelings and emotions that we feel justified. But help us this week in the name of Jesus. You in the room, you know, you know already what this message meant to you. And I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all what the Spirit keeps saying. He said, we're only here for a moment, but we are going to forever. So you can make it through this moment because God said, I won't test you above your measure. Don't let the devil tell you you can't take it. Yes, you can. If you couldn't take it, God would not be righteous. If you couldn't deal with it and righteously, uh, uh, handle it righteously, then God wouldn't be God. But God already knows he already has equipped us. So I'm not judging nobody. I'm standing here only because of the grace of God. No minister is preaching because we write. We are preaching because of the grace of God. The mercy of God is on our lives. The grace of God is the one that pulled us out of the drug and pulled us out of the jails and pulled us out of divorces and pulled us out of hurt and pulled us out of all these other issues. And now we stand here by the grace of God. Not because we so holy, but it's the grace of God. And every one of us in the room, we are here because of the grace of God. Come on, everybody say, thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. 
Thank you, Lord. You didn't leave me in the pit where you found me. You didn't leave me in the drug, in the alcohol. You didn't leave me, God, in the hatred, in suicidal thoughts, God. You didn't leave me, Lord. When everybody else turned their back on me, you didn't leave me, Lord, when I hated myself. <sighs> Comfort Kristen Cunningham. Help Kristen to know all he could do, he did. He prayed and he asked God and he begged God and he wanted God to help Abby. So Lord, comfort him. Comfort all the other Abbeys that maybe even somebody in this room that has low self-esteem. That the enemy has painted a picture that is too dark and you need to leave. But I come against the spirit of suicide. I come against the spirit of self-mutilation. I come against the spirit of alcohol and drugs to get through our pain. I come through, uh, I come against it now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's shut the door now against suicide. We shut the door now against self-mutilation. We shut the door now against depression and sadness and low self-esteem. We shut the door against every spirit that's not the Holy Ghost. We shut the door against every demon in hell. We shut the door against every lying spirit. Every person that would carry a lying spirit, we shut you down now. We block you now. We shut your mouth now. We give you no entryway into our hearts. <sighs> Come on, everybody, pray now. The Lord protect us. The Lord watch over us. The Lord keep our children. The Lord keep our family. The Lord keep us at Walmart. The Lord keep us at County Market. And when God opens uh, the Heavenly Square grocery, that the Lord keep us safe uh, in the grocery store. Keep us safe at Quaker Oaks. Keep us safe at T-Pack and Heister and Danville High School and North Ridge and all the schools. Keep us safe, Lord. We cry it out to you, Lord. Help us. We humble ourselves. Mercy, Lord. We need your mercy, Lord. We need your forgiveness, Lord. We need your help, Lord. Woo! Lead us, guide us, help us. In this hour we're living in, God, help us to make your word big. Magnify yourself in our hearts, Lord. Come on, everybody, say it. I accept Jesus. I believe by faith. He is the answer for everything that I need in this life. In Jesus' name, I forgive everyone. I shut the door of non-forgiveness. No to non-forgiveness. I forgive everyone. In Jesus' name, I free everyone. Because the Bible says it. I must be forgiven. So I must forgive. Whew. Spirit of the living God. Come afresh. Fire. 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 We don't need a little touch. We need a fire. We need a fire. Burn it up. Burn it up. Burn it up. Burn it up. Purify us, purify us, clean us up, clean our hearts, clean us up, clean our bodies, clean our minds, fire, 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 fall, 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 fall in this place, fall, fall, fire. A little 
church won't do, saints. We need fire. We need the purifier. Drive every demon out of our lives. Drive. If you don't think it's a serious hour, he's tricking you. If you don't think I need to scream and holler and that we don't need to scream and holler and that we don't need to be watching and praying and fasting this week and calling on the name of the Lord, that demon will open a door and he's so smooth with it, you won't even know until you find yourself in trouble. Hey, fire! Come on, don't be ashamed. Lord, have mercy on the people of Buffalo, the people of Ukraine, all around America, all the bereaved families, Abby's family, comfort God. Comfort all these families in this room as in recent days went through a loss. Comfort God. Fire, fire the Holy Ghost. Bless our giving, and we are dismissed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.